So every week I do reading sprints with my patrons and every single reading sprints during the breaks and reading we play some little daily games together. And a little while ago I got a suggestion on our patron discord saying why don't you use those daily games to pick what you read and I said absolutely. <laughs> I just think it's such a fun way to pick what I read. It's such a stupid way. Like, how am I going to get these daily games to pick what I read? I don't know. But that's what we're going to be doing in this reading vlog. We're going to be using the little daily games that we play together to pick what I read. Now, the three that we play every single reading sprint, there's a few other ones we sprinkle in, but the three that we play every single reading sprint without fail are Connections, Colourful, and Contexto. So I think those are the three I'm going to be using. And I think we'll do them one at a time. So we'll play a game, find out what book we're reading, read that, and then do it again. So I'm not going to know what I'm reading for this whole video like at all until I finish next book which is exciting so shall we just dive into it I'm very excited this is I love stupid ways of thinking what I read this is so exciting to me let's go find out what the first book we're going to be reading is hello friends it's time to find out what the first book we're going to be reading in this vlog is I'm very excited in terms of the books that I want to prioritize these are the oh bloody hell <laughs> calm down these are the five books that have been on TBR Cluedo so far this year that I don't have set plans to read. So in a video like this, where like I don't have a specific TBR, has a cat just got up? No, there's two cats there. I was worried I'd just upset one of them by talking. <laughs> They're a very fragile, fragile bunch. Oh, if I Jesus. could give you one piece of advice, it would be shut the fuck up. Yeah, in, in videos like this where I don't have a set TBR, I always want to try and fit some of these in because otherwise, what am I going to read? <laughs> yeah, if we can fit any of these in with the prompts, then we will do. But if we don't, we don't. And the next priority stuff is probably like new releases that I really want to get around to. I figured the first game that we'd play, we're going to play them in pretty much the order that we play them in the Patreon live reading sprints. So the first one is Connections. This is always what warms us up. We're pretty fucking good. Well, we're pretty good at all these games on the Patreon, to be honest. I never really play them alone though, because I don't, I don't think I'm as good without them. <laughs> so yeah, we always play Connections first, which if you don't go Connections, I'm sure most of you know these games. But with Connections, there's four groups of four and you have to find out what links them, basically. Holy shit. <laughs> Are you tough enough for the job? Mm, no. I'm looking at that and I have no clue. <laughs> So with how this is gonna help us pick a book, I want to pick a book that is related to one of the categories, right? We're gonna have four categories. And if I can make a link between something that happens in that book or the plot of that book or the genre of the book or the title of the book, I want it to be a link between a category and the book. That's essentially how we're gonna pick it. Right, I feel like we've got wrench, rip, yank, tear. There we go, there we go. Hull <laughs> using force, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what, um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna make a book link based on that one. Uh, this may, this may be a stretch, but if I can make a link, I'll make a link. Okay. Oh, routine, drill, practice, exercise. There we go. Bit of repetitive training. So maybe like a sport book. I don't know if I have any of them. Bloody hell. <laughs> okay, I'm doing all right. Spirit, oh, isn't it America, um, um, airlines. Airlines, right? Fuck, uh, okay, uh, fuck, it's something to do with planes. If I had that falling book, that would be a good one. I don't have that though. And then what's this last link? Sun dry. Beginning, oh, fucking hell. Beginning with day abbreviations. <laughs> Friar, monkey, sun dry, wedding. Do any of these books begin with a, no? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, oh, beginning with day abbreviations, sun. That does. Excuse me. I'm a genius. Look. We do have a beginning of day abbreviation, son. Or I was thinking Paul using force. Hear me out. <laughs> like, force is sciencey. These are the Seminist novellas. And like, they're pulled towards each other because of fate. And <laughs> their romantic and the chemistry forcing them together. But I don't think, I think maybe I have to go with she who became the sun for beginning with day abbreviations, sun. I think that's a good pick. Psych. <laughs> so it turns out I forgot that I'm actually going to be reading um, the she who became the sun next week. It is in fact planned for a video. I was incorrect and it's not really something I can swap out. So we're going to have to read something else. I like, I've not realised this till the next day, guys. <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, I am reading She Who Became the Sun for something else. So we have to pick another book. And I am going to go with Love Theoretically because whenever I think of force, I think of science class. And these are, you know, ladies in STEM. And fate and love is pushing them together. Was it push or pull using force? I don't know. Pulling them together, pushing them together. They're being drawn to one another by love and fate. No one says that, but <laughs> yes. Okay, word. I know it's a bit of a stretch, okay? The other two, <laughs> let me level with you. The other two ways we're gonna pick books are gonna be a lot more straightforward and like not open to interpretation, but Connections was always gonna be open to interpretation. So I am so excited to start Love Theoretically, you guys. This is like a five-star prediction. I can't wait to read it. I love it so much. I love Ali Hazelwood so much. So we're gonna read Love Theoretically and I, I think I'm gonna have an amazing time because I always do with Ellie. Good morning, friends. Oh my God. <laughs> talk about this i am halfway through love theoretically i'm obsessed i you know i'm just having the best time ever ali hazelwood i just don't understand how she gets me why do i love ali hazelwood's book so much like truly there's no other romance girly out there that i just immediately connect to like ali hazelwood i'm reading it so fast i'm literally flying through it. i don't think i'm even reading it properly because i'm just like ah <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. So I love, I love the premise of this one. So our girlie is like a science professor, but she's also, cause she earns like no money cause she's adjunct. Uh, is that how you say that? I don't know. You guys get this a lot. Like if you read a lot, sometimes if you've only ever seen a word or you've seen a word predominantly written, you don't actually know how to say it. <laughs> cause you've always read it. Anyways, on the side, she's doing fake dating for hire. So she'll go with people to like lunch with their colleagues or dinner with their colleagues or family and like pose as a fake girlfriend and she is fake dating this one guy who she really likes and she goes to a family thing and she meets this dude, right, his brother. And he's like, oh, it's going a certain way here. The cover tells a certain story, but she meets him and he's very stern. He doesn't seem to like her, whatever. And she's also applying for like the biggest job of her life. Like it's, it would change her life if she were to get this job. And there's one guy in particular who wrote a, uh, um, what's the word, like an article many years ago against theorists in, science, in the, her kind of, is it physics? You have theorists versus experimentalists. Physics is force. I learned about, <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to justify my choice of this book. Keep saying it. Just keep saying it. Keep saying it out loud. And maybe you will convince hope. So when she finds out that he is at this school, she's like, oh shit, you know, he's gonna be my enemy, whatever. Turns out, it's him. So she's like applying for this dream job and he's like, you're not gonna get it, like whatever. And it's there back and forth. And he also thinks that she's been lying to her brother because at the family event, she's like, oh, I'm a librarian. He's like, why are you lying to him? Why are you hurting my brother? But she doesn't wanna tell his brother's secrets to him. And his brother's at like a wellness retreat with no phone. And it's just, I love their chemistry. Ali Hazelwood's writing is absolutely incredible. It makes me feel things and like nothing halfway you know nothing's really happened between them physically things have been said but nothing's happened between them physically and I'm still like <sighs> I just think a it's a great romance right great chemistry but the premise is so fun I <sighs> Why do I love Annie Hazelwood so much? Can someone explain it to me? Is it because I liked fanfic when I was younger and like she is and she originates from fanfic and probably has some of the tropes of fanfic and maybe writing style? I don't know. That's what I always say because I used to love One Direction fanfic. I only read, and there's never on any of the fanfic websites, but I loved Tumblr because I was on Tumblr, like Tumblr fanfic. Not any of the dodgy stuff, but just like the normal cutesy stuff, you know? And um, perhaps that's where, that's where it originates. I don't know. So... I am having the most fun. I'm having the best time. I, I, like I say, I love their relationship. I love the discussions of like financial issues for people in academia in particular. It's very interesting. I'm eating up. What is there to say about romance? Like I'm just having the best time. I'm having the best time. I think it's gonna be a five star. I just had a five star if you haven't seen it in my Pride and Prejudice vlog that I did. It's flopped, but that's okay. I knew it was going to. I just wanted to read Pride and Prejudice. I know that series isn't gonna do the greatest, but I'm just like living with that because I wanna read more classics this year. And that's like kind of the way for me to do that. So um, I, but I, I, why am I loving romances? I'm in like a silly giggly mood at the moment. <laughs> I seemingly love all the romances I'm reading. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this today. I'm literally just gonna go do a little bit of editing and then I'm gonna sit down and read this. And I'm so 
excited because I'm having the best time. I'm absolutely loving it. <laughs> Guys, I loved it. It's five stars. <laughs> Talk about the club classic. If you're not on your feet tonight dancing, I don't know what's gonna make you. <laughs> Was this in my five star predictions video? I always forget, I always like completely remove from my memory what's on that list because like, so I can react to it afterwards. Was this on there? Have I got a 100% success rate so far if I do say so myself? <laughs> but I love this. I mean, it, it's a romance and it's the same thing that Ali Hazel has done every single time before. Like it's in STEM, it's he's massive and she's small. Actually, no, she's not tiny in this one. She's medium everything, let it be known. But he's so much bigger <laughs> than she is tiny in comparison. She is kind of like ditzy and a little bit like anxious and like over aware. And he's just a guy who's just obsessed with her and in love with her. <laughs> like. It is the same thing she has done in every one of her adult contemporary fictions. It's the same formula, but guess what? I eat it up every time. I eat it up every time and I go back for seconds. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> you ate that. <laughs> I don't know why. I love what she does so, so much. So if you haven't enjoyed previous Ellie Hayeswoods, would I recommend this to you? No. <laughs> Don't try. But I do think this is a very good installment for her. And I've seen a lot of people saying that it's their favorite so far. I just really loved the relationship in this. I really liked the career. This is like probably one of the most career, I mean, they've all been career heavy because they've all been like workplace-ish romances. But I just really enjoyed the career discussions and the career movements and like all of that stuff that happened in this book. And here's the thing, as someone who is not a regular romance reader, I do think the third act conflict is fucking stupid. Lisa, let me talk, so I'm the second one telling the truth in it. Fucking stupid. See, that's why I love Pride and Prejudice because they like start off on the wrong foot and then it builds. There's no third act conflict in Pride and Prejudice, as far as I'm aware. And it builds nicely. There doesn't always need to be a third act conflict, right? I think it's stupid. I and mean, you can see it coming a mile off, right? And I think the third act conflict in this. It, the reasoning is pretty stupid, but I did like the resolution of it. But at this point, I just don't really pay attention to that at conflicts because I know a book's gonna do them and I know I don't like them. And I'm just like, okay, you do your thing. I'll look away. I'll just be happy with the rest of the book that I just read. I loved it. I loved it. Ali Hazelwood. Ah, I am having the best reading time at the moment. I've had two five stars almost back to back with a little book in between, but we can ignore that. <laughs> almost back to back. That's crazy. Oh my God, my reading is going so good. So I'm on a reading high. I want something, you know, sometimes you want to sink into like a long book and I like, enjoy that. I read this so fast. I want to keep that speed going. I'm like ravenous. I want, hopefully, whatever book I read next to be a, si a similarly fast paced, like, oh my God, like, oh my God, I love reading <laughs> feeling. So I'm going to dive into something tonight. So shall we go pick, he's a daily game to pick what book I'm going to be reading next. Okay, so the second game we're going to be playing is Colourful, which if you've never seen before, is basically Wordle, but you have a colour. There's actually two ones a day, a normal one and a hard one. We play them both. There's a colour and you have to make that colour up by making other colours. <laughs> you have to create that colour. And I think this, some, this one sometimes trips us up. Sometimes we get to like the last round and we're like, <laughs> we, we're so close, we're like between two colours and we end up going with the one that we don't get. So how I'm going to use this to pick a book is that the colour that we're creating has to be on the cover of the book I read. And I want it ideally to be like the predominant colour, if not one of the predominant colours. I don't want it to be like, I don't know, a tiny colour that's on the cover. Like I want it to be a big colour on the cover, otherwise I'll use it to get away with something. And I have to get it right in order to use that colour. If I get them both wrong today, I don't know what we're gonna do, but <laughs> I have to get it right. That's added pressure in order to use that color. So let's go to colorful. Interesting. So that's kind of like a pale yellowy gold, I would say. So usually when I'm playing this, I get like, oh wait, no, that's the hard one. No, well, I guess we're starting with hard. Whoa, okay. <laughs> I like to get some obvious colors out of the way. I'll throw that one in for good measure. Okay, I'm, I'm doing so good. Right, so we got yellow first. Then this and this are both in there. So I'm just gonna swap them round. And what do I wanna put instead? That was too limey. So maybe the brown instead. Holy shit. <laughs> it's so close. Is it the white? No. Orange? This is serious business, guys. No. 
this uh, this is getting difficult. <laughs> right, I'm gonna try white first. No, I'm gonna try this peach. Am I? Because then if I'm wrong, oh shit. I could do what we call an elimination round, which is kind of cheating, but it's where I do four possible options to find out which one it is. Let's do that. Let's do that. I ain't, mama don't raise, raise no fool. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. It's none of them. What? A nightmare. Literally a nightmare. What? <laughs> Shit, I'm not gonna get to use. Okay, wait, which is my closest? That one. Where there's orange, but it's like two orange. <sighs> oh my God. Okay. Okay. It's either gotta be one of these two, right? I'm going with the lavender. Oh my God, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I was so close, so I can't use that colour. I think that would have been a difficult one to find on the cover anyway, so... Oh, okay. Like a pale buttercup. A pale buttercup yellow. If I don't get this, there's something wrong. Okay, right. <laughs> no. So that means white is first. Then the or no, then the yellow, then the orange. Okay, I got it. I can't believe I didn't get that first one. They're pretty similar colors though, right? I mean, this one's just a bit more greeny and this one's more yellowy, right. What do I own? That <laughs> color. No, that's too dark. I don't know if I own something. Actually, do you know what? Is that the color that was on the other one? I don't think it is, that's too gold. Right, we're gonna have to go over to the book cart. What do I have? What do I have that that's, that's that colour? <laughs> How could you do this to me? Question mark. Like that's way too like neon. That's not the right colour. No, that's too dark. I don't know if I'm ready to read this. <laughs> okay, here's the problem. I said predominant colour. But like, I feel like that, oh, I'm not even in focus. How long have I been out of focus for? I feel like that and that. I feel like that's the right color, but it's not the predominant color, but am I gonna get anything that's that color? Do you think that? Hang on, I need to go hold it next to the screen. I can't tell if it's like, if this kind of is the color <laughs> or if my eyes are just tricking me into thinking that it is. What am I going to do? Got to be one of the worst days I think I've ever had. <laughs> Being deadly serious. Okay, I've recruited help in the form of Tom. <laughs> right, that's the colour I need. And I can't find it. That one? That's not clear. <laughs> I don't have many yellow books. But I did think, I don't really want to read this yet though, but like that. Big man. Yeah, look, like that. Well, you want the you want the prevailing colour. But I want I want the prevailing colour to be. Let's read your little face again. Then my camera is not liking us filming this for some reason. Meow, meow. Oh. There we go. Yeah, I think that's. There the we go. He's gone and done it. <laughs> it's the cat who saved books. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And then look, With the scent of it. He saved books for everyone. <laughs> The books are saved. <laughs> that's, that's, you've done it now. No, like. I need it more. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Oh shit, I can't get up. Good boy. Bye. Bye, everyone. Well, it is the cat who saved books. It is the cat who saved books. Can we bring some cats in to save books? <laughs> Get out of here. Okay, looks like we're gonna be reading The Cat Who Saved Books. I was gonna be reading this like in a couple weeks or a month or two anyway, but we're getting it out, getting out of the way now. And it's very short. I'm very, very excited to read this one. It's been recommended to me a lot of times because I loved The Traveling Cat Chronicles, but I don't read another plot. Also, I think it's so short. I may, I can't promise I'm gonna check in halfway through. I may just end up reading the whole thing and then checking with you, we shall see. Oh, this is such a good pick. Yeah, that definitely is the right color, particularly like in the center there. 
Yay! Okay, I'll check on you when I'm either halfway through this or if I finish it tonight, because I may do. <laughs> Hello friends, it is the next day. I have finished the cat who saved books. It was okay. <laughs> it was fine. Meh. I think I'm gonna end up giving this three stars. It was, like I said, it was okay, it was fine. So we're following this boy, this young man, whose grandpa has just died and he's left him their secondhand bookshop. And this talking cat walks into the bookshop and takes him on these like bookish quests to save books. Is I, I think that's really all you should need to know going into it. And you know, I enjoyed aspects of this, but I was also a little bit bored. <laughs> And that's really what my three star comes down to. There's elements I enjoy about it, which I'll talk about in a second, but it just felt a little bit underwhelming. I felt like we could have gone further with it. It just felt a little bit like, oh, is that it? You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know if I wanted it to be longer though, because I kept wishing <laughs> that it was over, but I just like it didn't do enough with the great premise that it had. I will say I did like the messaging that this has about books. We have four different scenarios throughout the book that kind of teaches us about society's attitude towards books, but without saying too much, I also do think it like backs itself into a corner perhaps, but I think it has valid critiques. I don't want to say what any of them are, because again, I think this book should kind of be experience for the first time without knowing that kind of stuff but I do think it like it kind of says this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong <laughs> and it's kind of you know eliminating um some ideas of reading although I do agree with what a lot of it's saying you know I just think it's like it does back itself into a corner perhaps somewhat something that I thought was interesting and just felt like a little bit nostalgic to me was like that we kept meeting people in each world we'd meet like little people <laughs> leading up to like the big final boss in that world and the little people reminded me of like little people you'd meet on a Pokemon route, like little fishermen, you know, <laughs> they'd, they'd fight their magic up and then you'd go and fight the gym leader. And that's what it felt like. I don't know how to describe. You're chatting shit. Just the way they were talking. You know when you meet someone in the, in the Pokemon world, they like say like two lines and that's what the hell they would say and that would be like their personality. And then you meet the gym leader and they've got some like overarching like plot, you know, worldview that we're gonna, we're gonna dismantle by fighting them with our... I don't know, what one do I like? Yampa? <laughs> I don't know. Wooloo? I've got Yampa and Wooloo on the bookshelves. Anyways, um, that's besides the point. <laughs> that was just a little nostalgic element that I enjoyed. But for the most part, I was just kind of bored and just felt a little bit lackluster. One thing that's interesting, actually, is I looked at the back. The translator is the same translator as one who, at the very least, has translated the first uh, Honjin Murders book, which I really enjoyed. I don't think she translated the Inigami Curse, because it doesn't specify, but she has then translated Death on Gokuman Island, which is my next one to read. And I just found that interesting because these books feel so different. And isn't that interesting how you can have the same translator, but seemingly she's doing her job so well of translating these very two different writing styles because I could not have told you, there's no similarity between those books in in, for me in terms of writing style, but they have the same translator. And I think that's just fascinating. I would love to know more about the art of translation of books. She does have a little note at the back kind of explaining some of her translation decisions. But I just think that's so interesting how I feel like they're written so differently, but it's got the same person translating it into English. So yeah, I'd love to know more about uh, translation and how it works because I think that's such an interesting side of translated fiction, like the lens, how much does the translator have to do with the lens through which we view the book? I think it's fascinating. But anyways, it was fine. Let's go, <laughs> let's go find out what our final book of this reading vlog is gonna be. I'm very nervous, but I'm excited. So for our final game and choosing our final book, we are gonna be playing Contexto, where this game, there is a secret word of the day and you have unlimited guesses to get to it. That word is number one. Every other word has been sorted in the English language by how closely they are used together. So like a word that super commonly used with like treehouse, I don't know, they probably wouldn't be the closest to each other, but like, the closest ones are number two, number three, number four, whatever. And um, you have to try and figure out what the word of the day is. Everyone, we do have a daily game section on the Discord and everyone's been getting this one really quickly today, I feel like. So, seems to be an obvious word. <laughs> and the rule for this, for in terms of picking a book, is gonna be if I have a book on my TBR with that word in it, I have to read that book. Or, I think that's unlikely. <laughs> Or um, if I don't, then we're gonna do it by word association. So say if the word is like cafeteria, I'd pick a book set at a school, right? So we're gonna, again, this, I'll have to use a little bit of justification, <laughs> but um, it should be fine. Okay, we always do book as our first word. Mm, tree, 
How did everyone get this? Skin. Camera. I'm doing terribly. <laughs> Makeup. Terrible, terrible. Um, I need to think outside. Orange? Let's do a colour. Oh, okay, orange gets us a bit closer. Let me do blue and see. Okay, no. Bad, bad, bad. Holiday. Mm, vacation. Just want to see where that ends up. Okay. Um, treat. Oh, okay, 199. Treat. Treat. Gift. No. Treat. Dog? No. Treat is 199. Treat. Special? Mm. <laughs> I don't like, I never play this one alone without everyone else. <laughs> so I don't like it. Um, treat. Spend? I pleaded, I begged, I cried, I tried. I pushed as hard as I could <sighs> until I couldn't push anymore. Right. Um, I'm gonna put hospital because there was an ad for Grey's Anatomy on the side. You can't see, I'm trying to do something out of the box. House. Beautiful. No. <laughs> God, I can't believe I'm doing so bad. Um, chimney. I'm just saying things I can see now. Treat. Treat. Meal. Oh, dinner. Interesting. Meal. Meal. Lunch. Oh, shit. Lunch is 16. Box. Lunch. Lunch is 16. Let's put breakfast just for good measure. Let's see what that is. 37. Okay, lunch is our closest. School? Mm, that's low. Lunch. Sandwich. <laughs> Sandwich! I got it. 25 is not terrible. It's not the best, but it's not terrible. Right, now we have to see. I don't think I have anything with sandwich in the title, but we can look. Okay, my books. My books. <laughs> sandwich. No. Okay. What do I have that is related to food? Let me go on my own shelf and we'll just scroll through it on date added. I need something related to food, right? Like the immediate thing that comes to mind is that Elizabeth Acevedo book, but I've read that. <laughs> Sandwich. I need something food related. <gasps> that could be an option. The Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking by T. Kingfisher. A familiar is a sourdough starter. Oh, come on. I have to read that. Because sourdough, bread, sandwich. Oh my God, I have to. <gasps> Yay! Oh, that's so exciting. I think that's a great pick. A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. We're reading that. We're reading A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. Let me go find it. One sec. Here she is. I'm excited to read another Tea King Fisher because I, that's quite a lot of Tea King Fishers I've read now. And I've heard such good things about this one. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like it's that's a wonderful pick. I also believe I have got the audiobook for this. So I'm going to start that. I need to pack up some stuff to go around Tom. So I'm going to start the audiobook now. But yeah, oh, I'm very pleased. I feel like that's, you guys, that's a good pick, right? Based on Sandwich. Her familiar is a sourdough starter. So I'm gonna go start this. I'll let you know what I think when I'm a little bit the way through. But I think this is the perfect pick for me right now. Good morning, friends. I am about halfway through A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. And I am enjoying it. It's a cute little cozy fantasy book. You know what I mean? I will say the familiar that is her starter has had a very small presence in the book so far, which is quite upsetting. But I still think I'm valid <laughs> picking it for the prompt. Listen to what I have to say because I'm right. So we're following Mona, who is a wizard, but only her magic only really extends to bread and <laughs> like magic to do with bread. But then a dead body is found on the floor of her bakery. She finds it and it throws her into this world of like assassins and duchesses and people trying to get her and her running away from them and whatever. I don't want to spoil too much because I feel like actually at the halfway point this kind of what is actually happening is only just starting to come together. So that's all I'll say. I am enjoying it. I want to like, there's a books like this. I want to say my prevailing feeling is I'm enjoying it. I'm loving reading it. I'm very excited to pick it up. Like I can't wait to finish this clip and then hopefully just like finish the book and pick the book back up and finish it. But I have a few things to say. Number one, I don't know if like, a four star that's great right but it seems like T King Fisher is a solid four star author for me like CJ Chudai always gives CJ Chudai around a four star and I think I've always given 
um, T. King Fisher, always around a four star. I think the highest I've given is A House of Good Bones, and that was a 4.5. I think I've given her a 3.5 at some point, and everything else has been a four. So, like, that's a good thing to know you're gonna enjoy anything really an author puts out. But I keep saying I feel like we've got a five star in us, and maybe we don't. <laughs> maybe we don't have a five star in us. Um, maybe it's just always a four star, and maybe that's okay. I will say I've read a lot of now, this is like Tiki Fisher's horror and fantasy, and they're quite separate, I would say. There's a lot of hints of each other in both of them, but this is more of her fantasy, right? And it's YA. I think this is the first YA I've read from her, and there's just moments where the character, like, her youngness annoys me. Like, there's just little sayings she'll say that'll make me roll my eyes a little bit. I don't know, like, where she, where it feels like T. Kingfisher is trying to be, like, funny, or, like, down with the kids, and I'm not sure it entirely. <laughs> She's like, this is what a young person would say, but it doesn't actually feel like what a young person would say. Does that make sense? But on the whole, I think this is a lovely little story. If you're looking for something that's, like, cosy fantasy, particularly after maybe you've enjoyed Legends and Lattes, I think you could enjoy this. I don't think you can enjoy this as much, but I think it could still be an enjoyable read. I'm liking the story. Like I said, I'm excited. I just kind of want to go and finish this whole thing straight away. So I'm enjoying it. But I think me and Tinky Fish, I think I need to maybe like give up on the dream of having a five star. And if it happens, it happens one day. But at the moment, maybe she's just a very solid four star author for me. Hello, gorgeous humans. It's the next day and I have finished A Wizard's Guide to Defense of Baking by T. King Fisher. And this is a really strong four star for me. I much preferred where this went in the second half. Obviously I don't want to spoil anything for you, but I thought it was so fun <laughs> the way that her baking bread and her magic for that is like incorporated in the second half. I, I just loved it. It's so ridiculous. It's so fun. It's camp. It's camp. I don't know what to tell you. I think if you're looking for a fantasy that's kind of like a dark, fairy tale, twist on traditional fairy tales. T. King Fisher would be my number one recommendation, I can't speak, my number one recommendation with things like this, Nestle and Bone, Thorn Hedge, they're all kind of in a very similar field. And I think this one is such a strong iteration. A lot of like my, my problem of like some of the stuff she's <laughs> annoying me in the first half completely dissipated. I had the most fun reading this. And I think what this is an allegory for in terms of like how war can affect the individual, particularly the individual with lesser power, is very interesting. And I think this would be a book that would be great for a lot of people to read. I just think like if you're looking, like I said, for a little cozy fantasy, you can't really go wrong with this. Do I have a lot of thoughts on it? No. Like I kind of just read it and I was like, oh, <laughs> like that's kind of how I feel about it. But T. King Fisher, I, I'm taking, I'm retracting what I said. I still believe we have a five star in <laughs> Yes, at the moment she is just a very, very, very solid four star author for me, but I'm renewing my hope. What is life if we don't have hope? I can't believe I wake up every morning. I have hope that I will get a five star eventually. I've been looking into what I have left to read from T. Kingfisher, and a lot of it seems to be in this kind of one series or world where there's like sword heart and paladins there's like a whole series where it's paladins fate or paladins grace or something i don't know a lot of it seems to be in that which i think is more fantasy i do think i prefer her horror i think the horror is what i prefer with the house of good bones i gave that a 4.5 oh and i have the new um the sequel to what moves the dead what feasts at night so i do have that to read i do have a lot of t king fisher left to read but i feel like i've made my way through a good chunk of the backlist so yeah i would really recommend this if you're looking for a cozy fantasy and i hope you guys enjoyed this video this was just a fun little way to pick what i read and i read some books i mean i had no plans to read this or what was the first book? Love Theoretically. I'm so glad I read I read Love Theoretically. Yes, I maybe pushed it. I know, I think the prompt was a good one. <laughs> I think I fulfilled it. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a super fun way to use the games that I play all the time with my patrons uh, to pick what I read. So let me know which of these games you're best at. Do you have any daily games that you're really, really strong at? Let me know if there's any other books you think I should have picked for any of the prompts. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!